Hey guys, today on BRS TV Spotlight, it's the BRS Pro Series DI resins for your RODI system. Fair warning, as the name might suggest, this Spotlight and the Pro Series resins are a bit geeky. If you're looking for the industry standard of quick and easy zero TDS water, a single or dual stage of color changing bulk mixed bed resin is what most reefers use. That said, Pro Series resins take a different approach than your standard bulk mixed bed resin and designed to increase efficiency, decrease resin consumption, save money, produce higher quality water, increase color change accuracy, and solve some of the semi-common issues reefers have with their city or well water supply. Essentially more, better, and less, which is the value trifecta if you're willing to put in the effort. The Pro Series resins are based on combining the performance benefits of the mixed bed resin with the efficiency and unique pH related benefits of the dual bed resin approach where the two resin types are not mixed together to elevate the way we produce RODI water for our reef tanks. The more commonly used blue bulk mixed bed resin actually produces higher quality water than dual separated beds because the two cation and anion resin types mixed together in a mixed bed actually represents millions of tiny dual bed columns inside a single cartridge, promoting many of the contaminants to rapidly change form into something that has a stronger charge and easier for the resin to remove. However, mixed bed resin isn't the best approach for every contaminant, and because they are mixed together in a single cartridge, the mixed bed inherently forces you to replace both resins in the mix at the same time, even though one of the resin types likely isn't anywhere near depleted. The dual bed resin approach utilizes separated cation and anion resins, each in their own separate cartridges with a full cartridge of cation resin followed by a full cartridge of anion resin. This can drastically reduce waste and the low pH of the cation or high pH or hydroxide sites on the anion will improve performance on some of the more difficult to remove contaminants. The dual bed's reduced waste is achieved by allowing you to replace each resin as needed rather than both at the same time. A vast majority of reefers will completely deplete the anion portion of a mixed bed before even a fraction of the cation resin is utilized. This is particularly true for those of you with very high CO2 levels where the carbon dioxide just chews through the anion portion of the DI resin. With the Pro Series, you can simply change out the anion cartridge as needed and then allow the cation cartridge to deplete independently. Most reefers will find they go through two to five anion cartridges for a single cation cartridge, so there is significant savings and waste reduction. Beyond just efficiency gains, by keeping the cation and anion resin separate, we also increase overall performance on a few of the contaminants where a mixed bed's neutral pH just doesn't perform the best. A few more challenging contaminants require very high or very low pHs or hydroxides in the anion to be removed effectively. Most notably, the cation's resin's low pH will make it easier to remove ammonia, and the higher pH of the anion resin will result in higher silica removal. In fact, most of the silica eliminator cartridges out there are just this, an inch or two of anion resin at the bottom of the cartridge, followed by a mixed bed resin, something you could certainly make on your own if you wanted. Outside of that, color changing mixed bed resins only allow you to dye one of the types of DI resins in there and still produce a noticeable color change, which means you have to pick one or the other. In a vast majority of cases, it's the anion resin which is dyed blue because it's the most common to go first, but you have zero insight into how much cation charge is left, and in rare cases, the cation resin may have actually broken through first, and you wouldn't notice unless you were keeping a close eye on your TDS meter. In any case, with mixed bed resins, you really only have a visual indicator of one resin type or the other. By running separate dual beds, you can get a visual indication into the total performance of your resin solution. The cation is dyed purple and turns orange from bottom to top as it's depleted, and the anion is dyed blue and turns golden brown as it's depleted, so you have very solid insight into the consumption of each resin type and when to independently change them. As I mentioned earlier, with the Pro Series methodology, we're combining the performance benefits of a mixed bed resin with the efficiency and unique pH related benefits of the dual bed resin approach. To do that, we actually run the mixed bed resin after the dual bed 
which is a total of a three-stage solution. Again, the separated dual beds kind of perform like an individual single-pass filter with a low pH hydrogen charge cation resin is removing positively charged contaminants like ammonia, lithium, aluminum, and sodium. And the high pH hydroxide charge anion resin is removing negatively charged ions like nitrate, phosphate, bromide, fluorine, and chloride. However, essentially that single pass nature of the dual bed does not tend to capture everything and the nature of doing one after the other has the potential to result in the formation of some undesirable compounds, which is why we have that final polish with the mixed bed resin, which is essentially millions of tiny little dual beds inside a single cartridge, providing that last polish for ultra pure water. These three solutions together is one of the best solutions out there and super easy to implement. Okay, so what do you need to implement Pro Series resins? I'll share the intended solution first, and then after, a few more unique solutions for some of the resin geeks out there who might be considering unique solutions. The ideal solution is a triple stage DI, so you will need three RO canisters, three refillable DI cartridges, and they have very specific DI resins. Most of you probably don't own a triple stage DI solution. You can certainly buy a brand new one, but I would suggest just adding additional canisters to the DI you already have, either by mounting a single or dual next to what you have, or buying a triple or U-shaped bracket and taking the five minutes to rebuild it into one unit. I suggest a U-shaped bracket over the Z because it allows you to install canisters in either configuration connected with quarter inch nipples or sideways with push connect fittings and tubing in case you want to install TDS meters between the canisters. You will need three refillable DI cartridges. We suggest using only those that have a screw on cap located at the bottom of the cartridge like these. Cartridges where the cap screw on the top almost always allow for water to leak through the cap and bypass the resin. It might not be a lot of bypass, but we would all certainly prefer zero. With the cap on the bottom, even if it isn't sealed perfectly, 100% of the water still has to pass through all of the resin. Screw on bottom refillable cartridges are just a better solution. Lastly, you will need three bags of resin, one bag of the pro cation resin, one bag of the pro anion resin, and one bag of the pro mix bed resin. It's actually important that they're installed in that exact order. The purple cation resin first, followed by the blue anion resin, and then lastly, the purple mix bed resin. It won't work properly if it's installed in any other configuration. If you're going pro series resins, you probably already know how to pack a DI resin cartridge, but as a 30 second refresher, you fill it about a third of the way, tap it 10 to 20 times to settle it out, fill it another third, and repeat till full. At the top, I'd like to use a tool to pack it in there solid. This can be a PVC pipe with a cap or something as simple as a bottle. I like to use a 250 milliliter measuring cup, which are just over a buck and seal pretty good around the edges. Once it's full, scoop out a tiny amount with your finger, which keeps most of the resin out of the threads. Add the foam ring in and screw on the cap. I do have a few quick notes on using these Pro Series resins. First, just because these resins are labeled Pro doesn't mean that they're better than the bulk. In fact, they're all the exact same two resins charged with hydrogen for the cation and hydroxide for the anion. The difference between all of them is just if they're mixed together or separated and different dye configurations and of course how we use or implement them. The reason that we call them Pro Series is just because they're obviously a more advanced solution with legit advantages for the next level reefers who are willing to put in a bit of effort to learn how to realize those advantages. One of the most notable differences with the Pro Series is the standalone cation resin stinks when it isn't mixed, so don't be surprised when you open up that bag, it has a pungent odor, doesn't mean that something's wrong with it, it is supposed to smell like that one alone. Second, the anion resin is harder to pack alone because the beads are fairly small and it's a little known fact that all of these resins shrink over time and the anion shrinks more than the cation so there might be some open area at the bottom of the cartridge after it's been running for a while. This isn't because you didn't pack it hard enough, just the nature of the beast. The only important component is to make sure the entire cartridge isn't fluidized and turning over. It is okay if a small amount of that's happening at the bottom but not the entire cartridge. And lastly, we suggest using the Pro Series Mix Bed Resin as the final stage, which is the purple color changing Pro Mix Bed. It's basically the same as the blue color changing Mix Bed. However, rather than monitoring the anion resin by dyeing it blue, the Pro Series Purple monitors the cation portion of the mix bed by dyeing it purple, and it will turn orange as it's depleted. The reason we suggest the Pro Series Purple Mix Bed is because we want the color indicator in the cation. This is because the element that's most likely to make its way through both the RO membrane and the dual bed Pro configuration 
is sodium, which is a cation, so it makes sense to visually monitor the cation resin in the mix bed rather than the anion. In a mix bed, we always want to monitor the element that is likely to deplete first. That said, as long as you change out those separated cation and anion dual bed resins before they're 100% depleted, the mix bed polish should last a very, very long time. Just monitor your TDS, and while the Purple Pro is likely the best for a vast majority of reefers, if you see a rise in TDS before the purple change is complete, switch over to that blue bulk mix bed resin next time. General maintenance for the Pro Series is the following. There are three separate resins here. There's no need to change them all out at the same time, only as needed. Overall change out should go down pretty drastically because you've eliminated a lot of the waste and increased the total amount of resin and contact time. In most cases, that second canister with the anion resin will likely be changed out the most frequently and indicated by the blue resin turning golden brown. In most cases, that first canister will only need to be changed fairly rarely and changes from purple to orange. The last canister with the mixed bed should last a very long time. For the separated dual bed cation and anion resin, we suggest relying predominantly on the color change to know when to change the resin out. The color changing dyes related to pH and a pretty solid indicator of when the resin has been depleted of either hydrogen or hydroxides. We always suggest changing the resin when there's a half inch or so of resin left which hasn't changed color and not waiting for 100% depletion. It never makes sense to drive a filter past its usable life. We just want to use it until just before the filter is depleted but still functioning as intended. The color change does a good job of telling us when that happens. Once you do go past 100% depletion, DI resin will not just start letting some elements through. The depleted resin will actually still remove contaminants it has the strongest affinity for. However, to do that, rather than releasing hydrogen or hydroxide like it would with fully charged resin, the depleted resin will dump the contaminants it has the least affinity for, which for the cation is often ammonia and silica for the anion. Obviously, both of these are less than desirable. That said, while the color change is almost always the best tool for monitoring when the resin is about to be depleted, the TDS meter is the best tool to identify actual performance and when the resin has indeed been fully depleted. So we always recommend a TDS meter on the product water coming out of the mixed bed resin since this is the water we're going to use for the tank. If you are going to use a TDS meter on the Pro Series triple stage configuration, the best bet is to use a triple stage TDS meter, one measuring the RO water entering the DI configuration, one after the anion resin, which should be near zero if not zero, and one after the mix bed, which is the water you're going to use for the tank and should absolutely be zero. Note that we did not install a TDS meter between the cation and anion resin. That's because there's very little to no value measuring at this point. Well, common sense might indicate that after the cation resin, at least some of the contaminants or TDS has been removed and the TDS should go down. That's not the case. All that's happened after just the cation stage is the positively charged contaminants have been exchanged with the hydrogen, which creates a variety of acids in the water that have a very strong electrical charge. And because of that, after the cation resin alone, the TDS often doubles. It's not that the contaminants doubled, just that the electrical charge did. However, after the anion resin changes the negatively charged contaminants for hydroxides, the only thing for all that hydrogen to combine with is the hydroxides. Hydrogen plus hydroxide, or H plus OH, combines to H2O, or pure water. So for those of you that didn't know, the resin isn't actually filtering the water per se. It's simply changing out the undesirable contaminants for hydrogen and hydroxide, which combine to form pure water. So you can only expect the TDS to drop once the water has passed through both the cation and anion stages. To finish out this spotlight, we're going to share a few custom configurations of the Pro Series resins. I will say that using all three canisters in a triple stage configuration is the best solution. But with a bit of trial and error, you can do some other things. I will say trial and error here because at this point, you're creating your own custom solution for your particular water supply and its unique chemical makeup. For instance, you don't need to use all three resins. Let's say you had a lot of CO2 in your water or one of many common reasons burned through all the anion resins significantly faster than the cation. You could just run a dual stage that has a canister of anion resin first and then the purple Pro Series mix bed after. This would allow you to change out only the anion and prevent you from constantly throwing away the fully starched cation. And a lot cheaper for most reefers even with the relatively small amount of anion that will likely get wasted in the mix bed. 
This would also be a solid configuration for people with unique issues like low pH water and high silica. As we mentioned earlier, this is what a lot of those silica eliminator type cartridges are with an inch or two of anion resin before the mix bed. However, they are rarely dyed, so you don't get a solid window into how it all works. In relation to the dye and color change, I will say that there are some somewhat rare instances where you won't see a color change in the configuration like this. For instance, resin changes color when the water drops below a pH of around 10. So while this isn't super common, if your city's water is normally above 10, the resin won't change color. Mixed beds don't have this issue because the pure water that it produces is a neutral pH of around 7. So if you have a creative mind, you can also mix the Pro Series resins to achieve many different goals. Technically, you could even create a triple threat inside of a single cartridge with a layer of cation at the bottom, anion in the middle, and mix bed on top. Getting the right ratio in a single cartridge for your water supply to reduce waste will take a bit of trial and error, however, and why almost everyone will certainly be best off with triple stages, which gives clear insight into each. The three individual canisters are easy, simple, and the most cost efficient you might have to buy an extra inexpensive canister or two, but it will pay for itself fairly rapidly in most cases. Well, I hope I haven't bored you to death with all this resin talk. However, if you have any additional questions, that's what we're here for. Hit us up with a quick chat, phone call, or email, and we're happy to help. See you in the next BRS TV Spotlight.